Welcome back. Today I am with Barn Sprite 3 and today it's time to look at the carburetors. We have the car running and driving now, but the carbs could use a little bit of work. I could probably tune them and use them as is, but I'd rather take them off, clean them up, and go through them. So let's get the bonnet up and get started. The carbs that came on the Austin Healy Bug Eye are the SUH1s and these have a 1 and 1 8 inch Venturi. To get these carbs out, I need to disconnect the choke cable, the throttle cable, the fuel line, and then there's two nuts on the back side of the carbs. And then I'll take them out with them still linked together and take them apart the rest of the way on the bench. Fuel lines disconnected. Vacuum line is disconnected. Choke and throttle cables are disconnected. This bolt up here that holds the fuel line that runs between the two carbs is disconnected. So I think they're ready to come out now. All right, I've got the carbs on the bench now. First thing I need to do is separate them. I'm gonna undo the nut on one of these. Now that can slide out of there. These hoses are kind of stuck on here, so I'm just going to remove the float bolt tops and then they should be easily removable. These bolts are going to be a quarter inch Whitworth, so you'll need some Whitworth wrenches to do this. I can get the vent tubes out of the way as well. And when I take the floats out, I always want to check them, make sure there isn't fuel inside of them. And this one, I actually think I do feel fuel sloshing around in there. So it's going to weigh too much. And that's why these carbs were probably overflowing. Let's check the other one. Yeah, this one is much lighter than this one. So we're going to have to replace this one. Now, technically, these could be put in the ultrasonic cleaner and cleaned up but I am going to take them apart a little bit more first before I put them in the cleaner. So these still had oil in them, which is a good sign. One of the things that sets these carbs apart from the HS2s that the later sprites use is these have weights on them. So these are very heavy whereas the later carbs have springs that sit down in here and that's what pushes them back down. But these rely solely on gravity. So you do have to have the clearance here for this piston to slide up and down. Has to be, has to move very freely. Otherwise gravity is not going to pull that down and you may get a stuck piston. tell it's been a long time since these were taken apart. This piston. I don't know if you can hear that. A little bit of dirt of just holding that. So we want to make sure that that moves more freely when we put it back together. This nut on the bottom of the carbs, that is a 5 16 Whitworth. There's our float bowl. This pin is being a little stubborn, so I'm going to set it over a socket. And then I can tap it out. We had a spring and one of the seals go flying just then. So I want to make sure that we keep track of those. This is now as far as I need to take it apart. Just do the other one real quick. P 
pin is coming out nicely on this one. So here we can see this piece before the spring flies off of it. That seal is holding that spring back right now. I just twist it a little. There we go, there's that seal and that spring that had gone flying. All right, now all my parts are ready to go into the ultrasonic cleaner. I'm going to keep the parts together, so I'm going to do one carb and then take everything out, and then I'm going to do the other carb because I don't want to mix these up between carbs. This piston over here may not be matched as well to this dash pot cover as it is to this one over here. Let's load up a basket now and get these cleaned up. Drop everything in the ultrasonic cleaner. Put the lid on. I'll let that clean for a while and we'll check back on it. Okay, everything is clean now, which is going to make putting this back together a lot easier. I could probably just put these back together. I would have to replace the float. So I ordered some stuff from Moss Motors. I could put in the new float and everything would probably work all right. I am going to replace both of the floats. So we can take the two old ones out of there. And I also got a full rebuild kit for these from Moss. Let's see what's in here. So we got some new needles. And then here's all the gaskets and other parts that we're going to need. So let's get started. Like before, I'm going to assemble one carb at a time. So I'm going to start with the jet bearing and you can see a nut and a spring on this side. We need to get this apart because there is a washer in there. Pop that out. We got this little washer here that we need to replace. Here's the new one from the kit. Then we'll put this on. And then next we need to put in some cork seals and you need to soak that in oil before you install them. Now we'll take the jet, we can stick it up through here. We need to put a seal on there. And we can add a cupped washer. Then we take the spring, we can push that stuff down. Now that's held on there. Now here's where we need to be careful so we don't send these flying. So we need another cupped washer and then another seal to hold it all together there. And then this is going to go on the top of that. We have a new washer for the top of that as well. Okay, so this is assembled. So this can go back into here. Make sure that our jet can move, which it does. Now we can put in our pin We got a bunch of these new cotter pins. Check our movement, looks good. Okay, now we can install the fuel bowl. We have a seal that goes on the top and the bottom of this. I'm going to hold it on with the original stud. There is a bolt that you can get to replace this, makes a lot less parts. I'll have to reuse this fiber washer 
for some reason the new kits do not come with this one so that one will have to be reused we'll get this on the carburetor first and I'll tighten that down with a 5 16th Whitworth And before we put the float bowl on, we have two washers. They have different size holes in the center of them. The larger hole needs to go on first. That presses against this rubber seal here. Slide that on, then we can put the other washer on. And then the nut. And this also uses a 5 16 Whitworth. The seal right here that would go beneath the dash pot cover is not sold by Moss and it does not come in the kit. So I'm going to keep this original one here. To finish the float bowl, we can throw our float in. And we did get a new valve for this. There's a pin that holds this valve in and it only goes in one way. One side has a knurled end so that you can grab onto it. Looks like that pin is having a little trouble. So I'm gonna tap it with the hammer a little bit. There we go. I can grab it with the pliers. Let's pull the needle out. This one it's already been upgraded to one with a Viton tip on it. I like to use a small walled socket for getting these seats out. This one is 1130 seconds. I'll keep this one for my spare parts bin. I can use that later. Here's the new needle and seat. This one is also Viton tipped. And in the kit, you get a new knurled pin. So I'll just push this on and I'll try to center that pin. You can't have it sticking out too far on either side or it will interfere with the side of the float bowl. We did get a new gasket for the top of the float bowl. This one fits pretty tight. So I'm going to try to squeeze that on there first. There we go. And then I'm not going to put these on right now because they're just going to get in the way. But we have a gasket that goes right there. And then we'll have this, then this washer, and then the bolt. So this is the order that these items go in, just like that. I'll put these on later. That leaves us now with our jet needle. These can become bent over time and they also slightly wear as well. So it's a good idea to replace these. They're held in with a screw. So if we back that set screw out, we should be able to pull this out. Just grab my new needle. You can see these are slightly different, but since we replaced this piece, we also need to replace this one. So we'll stick this in here. Then we want to carefully slide it all the way in until it's flush there. I can tighten the set screw down and this can be adjusted later when we're doing the tuning of the car. If it needs to be. Let's check the fit here. Looks good. Tighten this back down. Now let's check the piston. Goes up easy, comes down easy. So that's fine. And we have this. This is the old seal. 
stuck on here. We have a new seal for that. And I have one last thing, I need to put the spring back on. And there we have our rear carburetor. I'll put the other one together and then we can put these back on the car. I do want to make a note, there was just wire that tied the choke mechanism together down here. So I did order the correct pieces to replace this. So here's a new stirrup to go in between those. Looks like that. And then a couple of the stops were missing. So have a new cable stop for the other side. It was missing on that side. It was just a bolt that was holding that together. And then our carburetor should be in fine order. And here we go. Both carbs are rebuilt and installed. I hook back up the fuel line, the vacuum line that runs to the distributor, the choke and the throttle, as well as the fuel line that connects to the back of the carbs. The old throttle cable was in really bad shape, so I did replace that. I had one sitting around. I need to replace the choke cable. At some point, some previous owner added a 3 16 socket to the choke cable to make it work, but I don't have one right now, so I will have to wait until I get another order of parts. After you have rebuilt your carbs, you will always want to check the piston movement. It should go up and come straight back down. If not, then you may need to center your jet again. And that is done by loosening this nut down here. And then you can either center it using the needle or using the pin in your SU toolkit. Now that the carbs are installed, we need to add our oil to the dash pots. If you don't want to take your dash pot cover off, you could lift your piston up, which brings the top of it just inside of there, which makes it easy for you to get the oil into the dash pot. You can see they're touching right there. Now it should be much harder to push the piston up. I am using official SU damper oil. You may also want to use different viscosity oils depending on your environment. So if you're in a colder or a hotter environment, you may want to change your viscosity from one different than what comes in these bottles. Now I'm going to set the base mixture and I'm going to use my SU adjusting wrench for that. So I will turn this until the jet comes up where it is exactly level with the bridge. I can see right now from the reflection off of it that it is just slightly higher than the bridge right now. So I'll bring it back down. I'd say that flat right there is about where it needs to be for it being level. And then I'm going to bring it down two and a half turns, which is 12 flats. And right there, that's going to be my starting adjusting mixture. And then I'll adjust it from there with the engine running. Now, lastly, I did order a pair of the original air cleaners. Do note that there's a little hole right here. That is a vent that the carburetor needs. So this hole needs to line up with these holes on the carburetors, both of the air filters have those so make sure that those go in the right spot or you are going to have problems with your carburetors on a bug eye it's important that you have the air cleaners because the bracket that holds the choke cable is held on with the bolts that hold the air cleaner so i'll take out these temporary bolts mount the air cleaners on that will hold the choke cable in place and it will also protect my engine from getting rocks and dust in it the new air cleaners are on and it looks great we are not going to start the car and tune it this time. The starter just went out. It's always been real hard to start this engine. And I think the starter just has been worn out from sitting in the barn for so many years. So next time you see Barn Sprite 3, we will start addressing some of the electrical issues. If you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.